over the coming years and decades, we're going to use robots to do things that people can't do. So that means uh, going into very hazardous spaces or going up to space, working in a petrochemical plant or a nuclear plant and doing lots of things in challenging environments that currently get done by people. And that's really good because you aim to increase safety and reduce cost. In this area, uh, there's been work with ro robots for extreme environments and challenging environments for, for decades. So the nuclear sector in particular has always used robots, some of them very crude. We're going right back to the early days when we realised that radiation was really harmful. We realised that we had to have some way of removing operators from uh, dealing with hazardous materials. We're right at the start of the computer age. And so, actually, what we know is that in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years' time, the software will all be much better, the computers will be all much faster, we'll find a bunch of new sensing technologies. And so, th this, is, this, is not, this is not an area which is just going to stop. The, the industrial facilities of the future won't just use one or two robots to do work. And this is just not just assembly, but doing all the other things that you might want to do in, a, in an industrial complex. So, so like an oil refinery or a big nuclear power station. We, we, we see that there will actually be lots of different types of robots that will have to work in a uh, collaborative way. So rather than having a camera fixed in one place in a, in a nuclear environment, so it's going to degrade over time, with all the wiring or with all the Wi-Fi stuff that has to be connected to it, why not actually have cameras on a drone or a mobile vehicle so you can put them where you want them and then bring them out when you don't need them there. This, this exhibition is, is bringing together a whole bunch of people that don't normally talk to each other. So we've got guys from food, guys from space, guys from oil and gas, um, nuclear, etc, etc, all, all of those sorts of sectors. There's some military guys here um, and what we want to do is, is to start sharing what we're each learning. So if we can start to collaborate then we move faster and that of course is really good for the UK because we're, we're, we're moving at pace. What, what we're looking at is a test facility for robots. So as we start to use more and more robots in lots of different places we need to have uh, confidence in how well they perform, whether we bought the right thing and so uh, we're working with uh, the US National Institute of Science and Technology who've been thinking about that very problem. So the idea here is you've got a test facility where a vendor can bring along their robot and uh, see whether it passes a whole range of standard tests. Go and look at a target, a, a thing, an item. See how well you can see it. Are, are you wobbling around and shaking or actually can you see the picture really clearly? Go and pick up that component and go and put it here. How fast can you do it? Is it easy for the operator to do that? A key point about doing this testing is to get to a level of confidence where um, a petrochemical company or a nuclear company says, yeah, we can use that kit, we can take it onto our, our site, we can get it through the safety uh, risk case. It's, uh, we know how to use it, the operators are ready to use it. Okay, so we had a demo here of uh, various robotic systems and remotely operated systems being controlled from this remote control room. Uh, what's clever about this is that we were interfacing to all of the same, all of the devices using the same piece of software and the same communications technology. So we had a crane, uh, which was the first device, it drops a task module into the environment. And this is an environment where we're simulating an environment that uh, can't be accessed by humans, so everything has to be done robotically. Uh, on that task module was a mobile ground vehicle, which drove off of the task module and into the environment. That was not only providing camera views and mapping the environment, but also delivered a component into the area. Once th that happened, um, an un unmanned aerial vehicle took off and began to fly around surveying the area. That was also providing camera views to the operators, but simultaneously building a 3D map of the environment to recognize any differences from uh, what was expected in the environment. 
Uh, finally, the <laughs> robot drove into the specific area for the task, and an industrial manipulator arm was brought in, controlled by a haptic interface, in order to remove components and install them into their location um, from the ground vehicle. The big challenges are in bringing in lots of different items from different manufacturers, all of which have their own communications interfaces, and then getting them all to work together. So our software sits in the middle and provides a standard communications layer for all of those things so that they can all talk together and work together seamlessly. In future, um, with these sorts of environments in, um, in power stations, in oil refineries and in scientific research uh, facilities, you get changing requirements and you get um, systems becoming obsolete and very old so they need to be replaced. The difficulty there is that when you replace one, typically other systems are affected. What we're trying to do here is prevent that from happening by minimizing the impact of changing those subsystems.